It's a bear. I actually dropped the coin that time. <laughs> Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Got uh, the live cam here at Robbie's down in uh, Island Rada going on. It looks like this young lady in pink is about to be attacked by a pelican. <laughs> well, for those of you that live in South Florida and you've been down to uh, uh, the Keys before, you're familiar with Robbie's. It's an awesome place. There's the bridge south right there heading to Key West from uh, uh, the peninsula of Florida. And again, Isla Mirada is not too far south of the peninsula, and this is a great place. You can take food, and I think she might have some food, and uh, feed the uh, tarpon. And they actually consider the tarpons like pets here. They get up to about six feet, eight feet long. They're huge, man. Uh, I seen a guy put his hand near the water with some food, and the tarpon actually came up and engulfed his entire arm. Didn't hurt him at all, but scared the crap out of him and a bunch of other folks. Uh, but very cool place, and if you're a tourist visiting South Florida, definitely recommend that uh, you put on your list when you come to Florida. Make sure that you take the drive, rent the car, take a drive from uh, 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 the top of the Keys all the way down to the bottom. Make sure you pick a nice day, nice blue sky day, and the uh, less wind the better. It's absolutely lovely down there. And any of you folks, again, that live down here can testify to that. Well, oh, it looks like someone's going out fishing. I'd like to be that guy right now. Check out that. Nice boat, too. Uh, is that a Grady White? Yeah, it might. No, it's not a Grady White. That's what I have. <laughs> well, hey, let's take a look and see what today's topic is going to be. And uh, by the way, you can watch the uh, Tarpon Dock live at Robbie's Marina. Unfortunately, I don't really see any tarpon out here being fed. Uh, not too many tarpon at the moment, but a really cool place. And uh, definitely, like I said, if you're ever down there, stop by. Uh, well, I, before I get into spot prices and uh, the 24-hour uh, charts and stuff, which are kind of interesting, again, and the rest of the uh, video here, something I wanted to bring up years and years ago uh, when I was younger, <laughs> years ago, of course, uh, uh, a gentleman told me this kind of, he, he, he said this to me, and I don't think it's original, I think it's, uh, you know, it's been around for a while, but it, it's, it's really true when you look around your life, especially... Uh, uh, I mean, just in general, it's true in a personal life, it's true with these markets, it's true with everything. Uh, and if you look around, intentions equal results. You've heard that before. Uh, but here's the spin on it. Here's the opposite side of it. Results often equal intentions. And if you take a look at what we've got going on in the gold and silver markets, particularly comics, and you know I've been railing on this for years and year, decade probably plus, uh, and other people have, smarter than me have been talking about this for a decade plus, but it continues to go on. And uh, uh, again, you can see the results uh, of, of, the results are low silver prices, the results of monkey hammering, consistent monkey hammering. And, and again, if you take a look at it, the results often equal the intentions. And I'm trying to figure out what the intentions here on comics. Is it just plain chicanery? Because words mean something nowadays. I mean, they could spin it as chicanery. And chicanery illegal, deception by trickery or sophistry. Uh, chicane means or petty artific artifices and, uh, did I pronounce that right? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, trickery and sophistry. I think that's correct. Uh, quibbling, stratagem, duplicity. Uh, deception by trickery, though, would be uh, an accurate description. So. If, if this was to go before a jury in a court and someone's to say, all right, comics, all right, uh, 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 you know, comics, you've allowed this to happen for some time, uh, is this plain chicanery? Is this just tr tr typical trickery done by uh, uh, marketplace players? Or is this fraudulent, engaging in fraud and deceitful uh, um, uh, behavior? Um, in my opinion, if it wasn't involving money, if it was a game that involved like credits that really weren't worth anything or a game that involved just winning or losing or getting a trophy, um, I would say that it's probably chicanery, which is happening in the COMEX markets right now. But given that it's involved involves money and uh, huge sums of money, uh, in my opinion, if I sat on that jury, I would call this fraudulent behavior. And if we take a look at how long this, what the, what the results have been of this uh, uh, fraudulent behavior, again, fraudulent in my opinion, what have the results been of this fraudulent behavior? Uh, the constant knocking of precious metal prices, particularly gold and silver, um, and, and it's done by the big uh, COMEX uh, commercial shorts that are out there, and they allow it to happen over. Again, if this was a game, you might get away with calling it chicanery, but this is real money. This is people's money. There's, there's millions and millions of small 
investors out there in silver, uh, myself and yourself included, uh, that, that get harmed by this chicanery. Now, most of us that are seasoned in this business know they can only keep it going so long. However, it does. This kind of chic no, it's not chicanery, I'm sorry. This kind of fraudulent behavior, in my opinion, that happens on the COMEX markets uh, directly hurts new investors that come in, all right? New people that come in, when they see this kind of stuff, they just get frightened. They don't, they don't think buy more, buy the dips, uh, and that this eventually will fail. Uh, they just get the hell out of the market, and that hasn't helped our markets very much by frightening the hell out of new investors or people that are just afraid to get into it because of the volatility created by fraudulent short sellers, okay? And again, this is my opinion, but it's pretty solid that this has been happening. Uh, I don't even think it's an opinion. I think it's a fact, actually, in, in my opinion. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, it's been, it's so in our faces, folks, it's not even funny. Uh, the CFTC refuses to do anything, and COMEX allows it to happen because they make a fortune off allowing it to happen, okay? It's just pure greed. But you know what? Again, if this was just for trophies or just for uh, ego, I'd say, you know, chicanery, we could call it. But the fact is, it involves real people and real money, and what's happening on the COMEX markets in the silver and the gold markets, in my opinion, and the opinions of probably millions of others, especially those of us that have been screwed by it, you know, screwed for real money, not out of a stupid a trophy. Uh, it's fraudulent. It's just plain fucking fraudulent. Uh, and these people actually should start uh, considering maybe uh, 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 that we might want jail time eventually when the uh, tar and feathering starts. And it will start at some point. Again, the sentiment uh, around this fraudulent behavior happening on COMEX markets and other markets out there as well, but the, the primary in the COMEX markets uh, in London. But let me just stick with COMEX. This fraudulent behavior. Uh, it becomes more wide, widely known by the general public. Uh, it, it used to be just a small, small, very small group of people that uh, talked about this type of behavior. Ted Butler was doing it over a decade ago. I think Andrew McGuire as well. Um, but it is becoming really more mainstream right now. And at some point, the, this uh, knowledge of this manipulation, fraudulent behavior, uh, again, I'm calling it fraudulent because it involves money, uh, uh, is, is becoming widely, more and more widely known. At some point, the game's going to be up. At some point, comics is, they can't be that inept that they're going to just allow this to continue to happen. Uh, at some point, they're going to step in and stop it because, you know, their, head, their heads and profits are on the line. Uh, but as far as expecting the CFTC to do anything, folks, I think we're doomed. As I said in yesterday's video, uh, the CFTC is either inept or complicit, uh, and, or both, actually. And I think on the lower levels at the uh, CFTC, on the lower levels, you know, the, 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 the average Joe that works there and gets his salary and has a pension, and uh, uh, the secretary of the CFTC, and the general people there, you can't blame them. I, I think for them, and I don't mean this to be demean, but it's mostly ineptness, okay? Inept. They're not, they're not given the tools. They're not told what to do. Uh, as far as the, again, this is my opinion, as far as the CFTC when it comes to the upper echelons uh, of the pe people in control there, uh, I think they're complicit, if you ask me. They're is plain complicit. They can't be that stupid. But then again, it is a government agency, so uh, let's not <laughs> let's not rule that out entirely. Okay. Uh, so you know, again, that's my opinion. I don't think we're going to get much help from the CFTC again. I would be very surprised. Uh, so I've just been peppering. By the way, I've been pecker, peppering uh, the CFTC complaint forms and uh, giving them a call, letting them know that we're watching and that at some point they are going to get 6,000 phone calls uh, to them and the legislators that uh, oversee their uh, CFTC uh, uh, organization, which would be the Agricultural Board, I think, or the Agricultural Commission. A lot of Congress people sit on that. But again, wouldn't expect much help from there, folks. I looked at some of these Congress people uh, and, and looked into their, their what they believe and what they do. These people are idiots. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that. but. A lot of people in, 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 in Congress, uh, and I'm not picking either blue or red, I'm just saying in general these people are not very bright. When it, They might be bright when it comes to certain things they're experts in, like me. I'm really good with gold and silver and precious metals. There's other things that I'm really good at. And then there's things that are outside my expertise that I'm a complete moron with, all right? And everyone is like that, even Congress people. But uh, why would you stick Congress people on a board that they're completely unfamiliar with any type of and the other thing that con concerns me, why is the CFTC rule, or, or rule under the uh, 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 
auspices or under under the agricultural board. Does that make any sense to you guys? Either they should be involved with the financial uh, uh, committees or something in Congress, which are probably just as useless. All right. Well, anyways, you got my opinion here. Intentions equal results, and results often equal intentions. You know, you can apply that to this market, but also apply that to everything in life. You know, when you see the same results happening and over and over, and 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 it's usually that was the intent. All right. So results. Again, intentions, if you intend to do something, uh, you can often create results that uh, make that intention come true, okay? And the same thing, you can also reverse engineer that and look and see what the results are of a lot of things in life and reverse engineer that and say, well, this is the result and this was likely the intention. Um, and uh, as I said, with the precious metal markets, what's the intention with COMEX? Uh, what's the intention? Is it chicanery or is it fraudulent behavior? Well, of course, there's such a fine line behind this right here. But since it involves real money and real people and destroying uh, uh, the wealth of real people, I'm going to call this fraud, folks. This is an ongoing fraud that's been happening for years and years on COMEX and allowed, again, by the CFTC and, and uh, other inept or complicit players. All right, let's move into the prices here and see what we've got going on. And uh, woohoo, here we go. Uh, okay, looks like you get knocked pretty good. 24-hour chart, man. I was a little concerned with silver today. They did knock it below that $22 mark. Uh, but uh, uh, let's first talk about gold. And uh, gold got knocked pretty well too. Take a look at that range. Currently sitting at 1773.95. It looks like a range overnight was 1767 to 1790. We'll look at the 24-hour chart here in a moment. Uh, like a $13 range uh, since yesterday. Uh, silver, I got up and I saw 2174. It might have even been a little bit lower than that. Uh, and a high at 2236, and that was probably last night. Uh, currently sitting at 2196, and platinum at 92638. Low at 19913, and a high at 93689. And a shout out to our chart guy, uh, who uh, makes you know uh, uh, comments in our comment section. He's called the chart guy, I think. <laughs> and chart guy says that uh, he thinks we're going to see a sub $900 platinum. Uh, kind of interesting comments. If you go to look at comments from yesterday's video, you'll see, uh, I think it was yesterday's video or the day before, uh, Chart Guy again thinks we're going to see an $850 uh, uh, price in platinum. I think if we see it, it won't stay there long, folks. I even think at this level it's a great buy. Uh, so let's take a look at 24-hour charts and where, where, oh, where has all this monkey hammering been taking place, folks? Oh, no, say it ain't so, Joe. It's the New York Cotton IMEX. <laughs> it's COMEX. Take a look at this, folks. Everything overnight in gold, uh, kind of hunky-dory somewhat, up and down, up and down. You know, considering the other markets, stock markets, crypto markets, you know, gold's kind of been holding its own, and it still is. These dips right here, that dip is only an opportunity to, uh, again, buy the dip and an opportunity to buy it at a little lower price. That's fine with us physical stackers because we're not worried about uh, leverage or, or, or having our... Uh, our, our accounts called <laughs> called in. Now oh, you got to put more and more money in. Once you get the physical, you, all you got to do is just watch this circus right here and buy the dips when you can. Uh, again, 24-hour spot price. Take a look. There's New York. You see right there that little line I got on my cursor right there. There's New York NYMEX markets. Take a look at this. Calm yesterday, somewhat calm all day, and then all of a sudden here, this is New York. Boom, boom. What the f what the f happened here? <laughs> I'd like to see what trade this was or or, or how many you know. What caused this spike right here to go down? Who sold uh, this morning? Who's been selling every day at the same time? Who's been knocking the markets down consistently every morning? It used to be Friday, Fridays and Saturdays, and uh, I mean Fridays and Sunday nights and Monday mornings and, and holiday times. Now it's been on a daily basis every morning, early in the morning, uh, so and for months now. So kind of interesting pattern happened here. But who the f is doing this? And who the hell sells silver and gold? Uh, when every other commodity is is is, is up in value, uh, I mean, th th it's just ridiculous, folks. It, it's so in your face. It's so obvious that again, it's no longer chicanery. I think it's just fraudulent behavior here, engaging in fraud, deceitful behavior. Uh, so let's take a look at silver prices, and uh, oh, another one. Say it ain't so, Joe. Look where we are here, uh, New York. There's a New York opening right there, folks, and there's your bang on silver primarily right there. So, and again, who sells silver? Who sells a metal like silver and gold in, in this type of environment in these times? Who sells large quantities of it other than an idiot or someone with the sole intention to drive the markets down? And I think that's what we've been seeing for some time. We haven't been seeing a free free market activity. We've been seeing 
uh, manipulation and, uh, oh, not chicanery, but fraudulent behavior, in my opinion, on the COMEX market uh, by these uh, big short positions and spoofing and all kinds of other bullshit. We know what happens. Uh, just when somebody actually does something about it or when it blows up in their faces is the real question. Again, folks, I've said it many times, of course, these markets are rigged. All markets are rigged. Everything in our life is rigged from the day we're born to the day we die. Things are rigged. The real winners in life figure out how it's rigged and how to play the game to win, okay? And uh, uh, it doesn't mean getting out of silver and getting out of uh, whatever markets. You know, even if you're a good crypto trader, you know, if you're a good crypto trader, uh, that means that you know how the market is rigged and you know how the market's going to end up and you know how to play it to win. So every market, it's the same thing from, uh, again, from uh, markets to elections, you, na you name it. Uh, uh, you know, from when you're born, like I said many times over and over, Santa Claus, <laughs> you're manipulated since the day you're born. All right, but we know how this game is rigged, and if you don't play, you can't win. All right, so we are players in this game. We're going to buy the dips in gold and silver. We also understand that gold and silver has been around for 5,000 years, never gone bankrupt. You're never going to wake up and hear uh, uh, on CNBC, Bloomberg, or whatever, uh, uh, gold uh, filed Chapter 11 this morning and silver filed Chapter 7. Uh, all right, you're just never going to hear that. 5,000 years, you're never going to hear that. You can hear that almost with anything else, including your currency, cryptos, uh, any stock that you own. What's the most solid Apple? Apple could go belly up for some stupid reason, you know, some fraudulent behavior or some kind of stupid uh, mistake they made. But gold and silver, nope, never going to happen in our lifetime, folks. It's all about wealth preservation. If you look at gold and silver's wealth preservation first, and then you think about making money second, you are a winner. Uh, again, buying the dips is the opportunity here. If you look at the uh, historical price of gold and silver as far as the uh, chart go, and let's take a look at the chart here. And uh, no matter what, on a long-term basis, what does this do, especially after 1970 when we went off the uh, gold standard completely? Uh, it's to the moon, folks. Gold and silver are going to go to the moon. Uh, of course, you're going to have rides like this in 1980 and rides like this in 2012. And again, rides like this after 1980. There it is. There's the roller coaster. But the roller coaster is the moon. If I take, see my cursor right here? If I take this line and just keep going up to the moon, and, but doing this right here, that's what gold and silver will do. It'll never just go to zero, all right? Like everything else does in life. Everything dies in life. Corporations, uh, empires, you name it. But so far, gold and silver has not died, nor will it in our lifetime. Um, anyways, uh, you, you're going to also have these roller coaster rides and you're going to have these big dips, which are going to be really scary for people that don't understand what these dips are. But again, uh, you got to have these dips to have these rises. You can't just have this all the time. You can't have this straight up line like this without having these kind of dips. And as I've said before, uh, I'm, I, I say, I'm saying something that I don't hear many gold people talk about, which is, or silver people talk about, is we have been in a bull market since we've gone off the gold standard. Now, that, you know, people say that we've been through three bulls, you know, 1980, 2012, 2020. I don't believe that. I believe we've been on a consistent bull ride since we've gotten uh, uh, off the gold standard, uh, since we went to a completely fiat type currency. We are the longest surviving fiat currency history in history right now. I think some people say the pound sterling was, but I don't believe so. I believe the United States is the longest surviving uh, fiat currency in history uh, in the world at the moment, and we are the experiment. Uh, so. Uh, this line is just going to continually go higher and higher and higher. And yeah, there's going to be some dips in there between. Well, let me take a look at uh, uh, what's happening in the stock market today. It's kind of sideways. It looks like the s and P's down a little bit. Uh, looking for direction. That's kind of what I get from the uh, stock market. Let's take a look. Crypto markets across the board. I got Coinbase on here. A little bit up. Looks like Bitcoin is getting trashed still at 46. Uh, it was a little bit higher than that. I don't know if it's trash or something like trash, but... Uh, uh, there's a market I don't understand, but I just follow it because I know some of you guys do. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, some of you know how to play this game. So if, if you know how to play the crypto game and make money, great. But in my opinion, folks, unlike gold and silver, uh, you know, don't just throw money in the crypto uh, market and expect to see it there five years and ten years from now. It doesn't have the track record that gold and silver does. Very highly speculative, good way to make money, also a good way to lose money. So learn how to play this game if you're going to play this crypto game. Uh, meanwhile, as far as anything, so there's, there's nothing out there that has outlived gold and silver. No corporation, no empire, no currency, 
uh, nothing, no stock, bond, you name it. Uh, so you've got security in gold and silver. You don't have that. Uh, 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 you don't have to worry about it again waking up and seeing that it went bankrupt. And overall, the uh, again in a fiat-driven world, the, the the path with gold and silver is to the moon. Uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, Seeking Alpha here. And as you know, I'm going to look at my portfolio, my faux portfolio of stocks and bonds. Uh, consumables is food and everything. That's critter stocks right there, which is mostly uh, uh, stocks that I stuck in there that were uh, pharmaceuticals. Uh, and of course, they look like they're doing okay. Uh, health and death stocks, well, they're not doing so well, but health and death stocks, minor. Uh, across the board, none of my stocks are doing great here either. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know why I talk about this. I might even just cut this whole section talking about stocks out of here. It's really not relevant to our conversation. And, uh, uh, but it is kind of relevant, you know, if stocks and bonds uh, start taking a giant dump here, uh, chances are, well, it's tough to say, you know, when 2008, when everything took that big giant dump overnight, gold and silver took a big giant dump, but you couldn't buy the real stuff for sure. You could only buy paper metal at that time. Uh, and we may see the same thing happen if the stock market here takes a big dump. But if it's spread out over time, I think that the, uh, the we're not going to see an overnight crash in the stock market. What I think is we're going to see just the drift downward over a period of time, uh, kind of just, you know, a death by a thousand cuts again. Uh, but no less, uh, I think gold prices are going to perform very well in that environment over time as well. Uh, and you know what, I don't even have to say, I don't care what happens, gold and silver is going to, unless we go back on a gold standard, some magical unicorn type of uh, finance that we can uh, 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 limit spending and uh, keep strong value and sound money, uh, uh, I don't think we're ever going to see uh, the price of gold and silver go down. I don't think we're ever going to see it go away for sure. So until that happens, until that unicorn comes along, uh, um, you know, keep hanging, keep stacking, and that's my opinion. Well, uh, not much to talk about here. Uh, in ZH, I was looking for some gold and silver information. Of course, uh, lots of uh, news out here. Uh, I'm going to go down here and say good for gold, bad for gold, or good for gold and silver, bad for gold and silver. Uh, this is good for gold and silver because, again, it just prolongs the bullshit that's been going on and hurts the economy even more. Good for gold and silver. Um, good for their stock. <laughs> I don't know if it's good for gold and silver, uh, but good for their stock. And uh, let's see. Well, interesting. Well, it's good to hear he actually said that. Um, uh, gosh, we could do a whole video on this man right here. And actually, there's people out there that do nothing but videos just on Elon. He's got his own little fan club going out there. Uh, this is uh, good for gold right here uh, because, uh, you know, gold and silver. Not good for the economy in general, so that's probably good for gold and silver. Uh, oil uh, tumbles, Brent prompts spread to contango after. Uh, that is probably uh, good for gold. Gosh, everything. <laughs> Sounds like I'm going to say everything is good for gold and silver. God, it sure feels like that. And uh, all right, let's just get out of here. Uh, same old bullshit as far as the news goes. It just kind of gets tiresome at some point talking about the same old shit. Let's take a look at yesterday's video. Okay. Uh, by the way, if you're new to my videos, I'd appreciate it if you hit that uh, uh, sh like button uh, and subscribe button as well. That's kind of a cool. It lets me know you're watching, and the thumbs up button is kind of cool. Look, I'm going to thumbs up my own video there. <laughs> uh, it's yesterday's uh, 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 video here, and let me do sort by newest first and go down here. I'm going to just kind of answer some questions here, and then we're going to kind of close out of this video. Uh, take a look at spot prices one more time before I go. Hey, uh, Jeremy, if you're down here, make sure you stop by. I'm not always in the store, so call to see if I am. Uh, and if you don't see me in the store, just ask if I'm around. I'll try to come down and uh, uh, say hello or come over and say hello. Uh, and uh, glad you're enjoying the area. If you get a chance, go down and take that drive down to the Keys, man. It's really cool. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, thanks for being a subscriber, Jeremy. I really appreciate it. It's funny you said that, Gomer, because last night I was watching John Wick. Man, that movie is just nonstop. I'm not a big fan of violence. I can only watch so much of it. But... Damn, <laughs> just, that is probably one of the most nonstop violent movies I've ever seen in my life. Uh, but you're right, I don't think he had any Bitcoin. I think they mostly had gold coins or some kind of coin they used. Uh, it's kind of pretty funny. Um, palladium, yeah, that might not be a bad idea. Uh, uh, keep stacking, sir. And uh, Monkey Hammer tomorrow, fed to open mouth. Aha, uh -huh, I forgot about that. I was going to mention that, Thomas, is that... Think about that. Today, gold and silver got banged again right before, what did I say? It's usually thinly traded hour, or, you know, thinly traded markets, holidays, or when, uh, before or after the Fed speaks, all right? 
And what's the excuse going to be for this one as far as the Fed opening their mouth? Oh, we're going to taper, we're going to taper, we're going to raise interest rates. You know, like raising interest rates. You know, there's a thing that's, that, that people used to say, idiots would say. Oh, if they, years ago it might be true when, when uh, uh, you know, you could buy those kind of things and it would pay above what the inflation rate was, you know. So, for example, if inflation, true inflation was 3 or 4 percent, and you were getting a bond or some kind of interest that was paying you five or six percent, that's a positive income. On it. So that could pull money away from gold, especially in treasuries and bonds and things that are, you know, rated highly and people trust. Um, however, we are such in crazy inflation area that the, the Fed would have to, Treasury would have to raise, you'd have to get a eight percent return or ten percent return, maybe even just break even in this current environment. So you know, that ain't going to happen. They ain't going to be raising rates anything significant. It's going to jawbone these rates, raise them a little bit, insignificant amount, jawbone the fuck out of them, make it sound like it's significant. And, uh, you know, again, the Fed is uh, like the, 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 uh, a good captain on a sinking ship, uh, like the Titanic, okay? Uh, well, well, we won't use it. Just the Fed, the Fed people are, especially uh, uh, the central bankers, Powell and these guys, they're like the captain. They, they can't tell everyone the ship's going down because the ship is going down. Every fiat currency goes down. They know this. We know it. Uh, but they can only tell the passengers who are knee deep in water just to enjoy the, the swim. Uh, everything's okay. We got it under control. <laughs> uh, so all they can do is keep everyone calm by jawboning shit. Jawboning shit. And that's what they're going to continue to do until the dollar just drops dead, which I kind of doubt is going to happen. They're just going to reinvent it somehow, uh, maybe in a digital way, which scares us scares the hell out of me, but yeah, you're right. I digress. Sorry about that, Thomas, but you're correct. Uh, the Fed is speaking today, and this is a great opportunity for the uh, uh, fraudulent players on comics to monkey hammer these markets. Uh, when was 20 ounce could find generic at two to three spot and even under 20 rounds? Price is down. Premiums are up right now. Uh, you know, even at the uh, uh, price was 30 bucks an ounce, premiums were pretty high even at that higher. Silver, when silver was at $28 an ounce, uh, premiums were still pretty damn high. Uh, except for Silver Eagles. Silver Eagles are still crazy. That's because the U.S. Mint stopped producing them uh, for whatever the fuck reason. I don't know. Uh, they, need to, they, they, they shouldn't have stopped producing them. Under law, uh, they're supposed to continually produce them under no excuses, but they, they stopped. And there's some speculation and even what I would call a conspiracy out there that says that the Mint was told to stop producing Silver Eagles because they were pulling too much silver off the market. Can't say if that's true or not, but sounds sounds like it could be. Based on nowadays and how things are happening now, yeah, that could be. It's so in our faces, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, thanks, uh, Silver Loving Lou. How you doing? And BC is running stored on infrastructure. BC have no control of taxes on estimate project will be a weapon of the insane government. Yeah, that's true. I, I can't argue with that. I feel better. <laughs> thanks, Zipper Fix. Nice to see you uh, commenting there, and I appreciate you watching. And uh, John Gordon, hey, thanks, man. I appreciate you saying one of my uh, favorite uh, podcasts and Salivate Metals. Yeah, I've listened to that guy, Sal. I've seen his videos, man. He is prolific. He's probably one of the hardest working uh, video producers out there. He does like two or three videos a day. Uh, and sounds like a really friendly, nice guy as well. Hey, uh, thanks for watching, John. I appreciate it. Heart of Texas, I used to be conspiracy here until it all came true. Yeah, me too, sir. Um, and uh, Owen Spillot's been losing investments so far. I'm, you know, um, you know, I'm not a fan of Sprott uh, only because I've lost a lot of money with Sprott and not their fault, my fault. I got eaten up with fees. I put it away like 10 years. When they first opened, I bought Sprott. Almost the first week or two, the first couple month or something, they started the Sprott Silver Fund and Gold Fund, or Silver. I bought in right that week or within the short period of time when they first opened it. I did well. Uh, it followed. It seemed like it was closely following the price of silver. And then, it, then all of a sudden, I looked recently, and it's worth half of what it was uh, when silver was, uh, you know, lower even. So it surprises the shit out of me. But what I realize is, it's the fees, man. You cannot put ETFs away and 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 hope that they're going to be there for your retirement, folks. The fees just eat eat, eat the fuck up. So. Um, and again, I didn't have a lot of money in that account too, so don't I don't want to make it sound like the that the fees were so high. I had I probably stuck uh, ten or twelve thousand dollars in uh, SLV or something like that. I don't even remember, uh, but it's worth less. That's worth like seven now or something like that. It was even higher than it was high at one time. Then it came down. But again, uh, any of those things that uh, maintain fees, uh, I would avoid them, folks, unless it's short term. As far as owning gold and silver, if you own the physical, once you paid the premium, if you're holding them yourself and you're storing them yourself, which I recommend you do because you don't incur uh, 
well, what I was going to call it, not the second party risk, we we're going to call it counterparty risk. You don't incur any counterparty risk if you hold it yourself. Um, so that's what I recommend. And you don't have to pay fees. You won't wake up and find out that fees ate up your account like I did. Uh, do not buy or recommend uranium. We do not have fuel. Uh, kind of interesting. I'm not sure how I feel, Akisha, about uh, um, you know using uh, uranium with the newer technologies and stuff. You know, the thing that happened in uh, Fukushima, I think that was, I'm not sure it was a newer power plant. It seems to be an older power plant, uh, but no less on the ocean. Come on, man. Uh, and and in, a, in a fault zone for, <laughs> who built that place? Somebody wasn't thinking on Fukushima, but I, I do believe that with the technology we have today and if we do it properly, that uh, it might be a way of using clean energy safely. Again, uh, safely is the key word here, and I got to agree with you 100% on that. Um, thanks for uh, uh, recommending Ron Walker. I kind of looked at him last night and didn't get a chance to, to listen to him, but thanks. And uh, <laughs> it's true, man. At least with a $100 bill, you can wipe your ass. You can't wipe your ass with the Bitcoin, and we all know the value of toilet paper nowadays. So <laughs> thanks, I appreciate it. Central gangsters are buying. Yes, that's true. Thanks for watching, Dewey. Uh, with all this talk about Fed tightening, I think gold will come down in price early on next year. Top, no, well, that's what I was just talking about. The Fed tightening is just jawbone and Glenn. Yeah, it might drive the paper markets down temporarily, but people, again, just like people who are getting wise to the fraudulent activity in, in COMEX, again, my opinion and the opinion of millions of others, that there's fraudulent activity going on in COMEX. Uh, it's the same thing with uh, uh, the, the Fed jawboning. We all know it's bullshit, and more and more people are starting to realize it's bullshit. So at what point do, do the credibility just kind of takes a giant shit and people don't pay attention to them anymore. Uh, but anyway, I digress again. Thanks for watching, Glenn. Uh, according to Google, Tesla owns 42,000 Bitcoins and Satoshi himself owns 1.1 million Bitcoins, even though no, no one knows who Satoshi Nakamoto is. Um, everyone knows who Elon is. Uh, I don't know, William, that's probably true. Uh, uh, Tesla owns 42,000 Bitcoins, but you know that's a drop in the bucket for that guy, probably. And Satoshi himself owns 1.1 million Bitcoins. Uh, again, you know, the fact that uh, uh, this is an unknown entity that created Bitcoin was one of the things that also scared me in the past and still does, still does to this day. Thanks for watching, uh, William. I appreciate it. And commenting. Uh, yeah, we do all own palladium in our Calic converters. Uh, thanks. I am a palladium owner. <laughs> have a nice day, Celeste. Thanks. Uh, gold will beat Bitcoin. I will have to agree with you on that. Thanks. We'll see a drop at the first of the year. Tough to say. We're going to see a lot of drops on our path to the moon, uh, Michael. So, you know, if you can, buy the dips. If you can't buy the dips and you're not going to buy the dips, uh, just ignore them for now. It's, it's a continuing path upward. Uh, USAW, you have all been tricked. All you stackers have been tricked. I don't know why. I don't see it. Wall Street, Silver, Katie, Miles Franklin channels such as this put fear into you, fear mongering. So you drove the prices up like crazy. You drove the prices up for those who hold short positions. Know this. They help you drive. Having the price get around, they dump theirs. I, oh, jeez. Well. Uh, USAW sucks. Uh, listen, I really appreciate your comment, but I kind of disagree with you quite a bit here. I don't think anyone's been uh, uh, suckered here. Uh, I heard the same thing, you know, I've been in this business a long time, and when silver was breaking that uh, uh, 5 and $10 mark, you know, I was really young then, oh, it'll never stay above 5 long, it'll be back below 5, and then when silver broke above 10, it'll never stay above 10, it'll be back below 10. Uh, then when it broke the uh, 15, uh, same thing, and the $20 level, the same thing, it'll never, you know, it'll, it'll never stay above 20, and it'll never stay above, you know, you hear that, and as I said, uh, it's a roller coaster ride to the moon, uh, USAW sucks. Uh, so if you, if, you, if, you, if, you're, if you can't handle the, the dips and you're not buying the dips in this market right here, then uh, uh, really you're giving people bad advice here. <laughs> and actually, let's see here, uh, not bad advice, and I get that's your opinion, but it's not necessarily the truth. It's not the truth at all, actually. Uh, those, uh, I don't think that uh, uh, fear mongering drives the price up. What is fear mongering, by the way? Fear mongering? Uh, do, do you not read the news on a daily basis? Do you not watch what's happening to you? Do you not look at the current markets and the craziness of what the Fed is doing, the craziness of what governments are doing? That's fear mongering? Is that what you call fear mongering? No, sir, that's reality. And the reality tells us that gold and silver are going to continue to climb. They've been around for 5,000 plus years. Uh, the idea that you think because you shorted it and some short positions out there are going to forever command the price of silver is nonsense. Listen. 
if the short positions were in the position to keep silver down low and constantly make money like that forever, we'd still be at five bucks and we're not. So, you know, they can only do it for so long. They can only keep these positions for so long where they, until they move up to the next level. And uh, as long as COMEX allows them to do it, it's just going to stifle the price of gold and silver, but certainly not make it stop or go to zero. That's just, that's just crazy thinking. Hey, but thanks for watching. I really appreciate your, uh, 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 comments here, uh, even if I disagree. And again, who am I to disagree? I've only been doing this since 1977 on a daily basis. Again, not a, not a, a chartist, but a, as a, a physical buyer and seller who's been watching gold and silver prices for years. Uh, bye. Anyways, sorry. Hey, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, Big Water, um, you know, I don't know, man. Uh, God, there's so what does that have to do with anything? I've met a lot of idiots that have uh, Muslim names and Jewish names and Christian names and non-religious names. Uh, there's idiots everywhere surrounding us, folks. It just so happens they may have a particular tag on them, but um, <laughs> this is kind of meaningless. And I don't even like to see this kind of stuff mentioned on my uh, site here. So uh, um, appreciate the comment. No, I don't appreciate the comment, Big Water. I really don't. But uh, meanwhile, uh, um, that has nothing to do with anything. So sorry about that. Don't mean to delve into that territory. Uh, you have a nice day anyway. And, and uh, I'd like to uh, thank everybody for watching and uh, commenting here. And uh, if you get a chance, hit that uh, like button and also hit the uh, share button as well. Uh, and I'm going to move into the end of this video, which is me saying, hey, this is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. Uh, call me anytime between uh, 10 and 4, Mondays through Fridays, if you live in South Florida and you can come and visit me. We don't do online sales, remember that. Uh, so if you need to uh, buy something and you don't live in my area and you can't come and visit my store, you do need to find yourself a good local dealer. And I recommend you find a good local, handsome, smart guy like myself as a local dealer. <laughs> They're out there. You may have to drive an hour or two, but keep that money in your state. Keep it in your community. It's really important. I advertise to beat Atmex, SD Bullion, and JM Bullion. Uh, you know, for their more popular, uh, reasonable price products. And uh, your local dealer should be able to do the same for you as well. Again, nothing wrong with JM, Atmex, SD. They're the big 800 pound gorillas out there online. Uh, but, you know, for your local dealers and myself, it should be easy for them and it's easy for me to beat their prices, beat their service, uh, and on a personal basis as well, which is hard for them to do. Hey, thanks for watching, everyone. Y'all have a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow and let's see what happens. Bye now. Oh, and don't forget to fill out those complaint forms. <laughs>